back like we never left. It's Double Move Sports. As always, I'm Stuff Albiero. I'm here with the Fantasy Phenom, Alex Lott, my guy. And we're grinding, guys. You can see, like, we're trying to keep the win in our sails right now. We are at week 11 in this fantasy season. The grind is real. Teams have given up in a lot of your leagues. This is the time to make that playoff push. If you're still watching this, if you're still invested, if you're still trying to win a league, we got the starts of the weeks for you this week. We got deep names, names that probably have some questions about, maybe coming off some bad performances. We'll give you that stamp of approval based on the stats and the analytics and the game film that we've seen to tell you, should you plug a guy back in or not? But Alex, you ready to go? Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end today? Hype to get into these start sits. And Steph, you said it best. It's it's time to grind. We've seen some injuries. We still have some bye weeks coming up over these last couple of regular season fantasy football weeks. It is time to make the right decisions, plug the right guys into your lineups to get into the playoffs. And yeah, if you are paying attention, if you're still playing, like this video is for you because this is what is going to set you apart and get you those championship Steph, I see your starts and they are much deeper than mine um so we got it all for you mine are are guys you might have question marks about guys that aren't smash plays but they're probably rostered Steph, a couple guys on your list you might be able to pick right up off the waiver wire so i'm super hyped to get into some of these names year after year when, when it gets into this deep in the season you and i have pulled out the names like olamide zacchaeus we've streamed brashad perriman back in 2019 putting up top five wide receiver numbers down the stretch those are the type of names that we're going to continue to give you and this is what we do best I think this is really is our bread and butter at least when we're in season it's looking at these super deep names guys that you typically don't think of you probably didn't draft them at all and that's how you know that we're deep into the season especially with all the COVID protocols and things like that hopefully so we see some of the names like Nick Chubb play this week but Alex I'll let you kick it off with your quarterback start of the week I'm starting out with Joe Burrow coming off the bye week against the Vegas Raiders. Cool. I know Burrow disappointed in week nine, the last time we saw him against Cleveland. Didn't throw a touchdown in that game, threw a couple interceptions, by far his worst fantasy football performance of the year. But coming into this game against the Raiders, I'm expecting him to get back to the Joe Burrow we saw over that middle stretch of the season. Week four against Jacksonville, 348 yards, two touchdowns. Week six against Detroit, 271 and three. Against Baltimore, 416 yards and three touchdowns. And then against the Jets, 259 and three. So we've seen Joe Burrow put up these monster games with, you know, big time yards and with touchdowns. Coming into week 11, his supporting cast is fully healthy. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, even CJ Uzama has shown flashes. He has Joe Mixon out of the backfield. Arguably the best you know, weapons core in the NFL. You look at the matchup as well. Vegas is 21st against fantasy football quarterbacks. And the over-under in this one's 50 and a half. So there should be some points put up on the board. At least Vegas is expecting so. And it's indoor as well. Like if you need the icing on the cake, this one is in Vegas. It's starting to get cold out. Weather is going to start affecting these games Mm. more and more with some snow, with some cold, things like that. Guys getting uncomfortable, but in Vegas in the Death Star, not going to be an issue for Joe Burrow and the Bengals this week. So Joe Burrow is one of those guys coming off the bye, coming off a disappointing week. You had to start a different quarterback last week, and I'm plugging Joe Burrow right back into my lineup in week 11. Love that endorsement on Joey Burrows this week. My start of the week is Ryan Tannehill, a true streamer of all streamers from the same vein as Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. Even Carson Wentz, names that we've been throwing out over these last couple weeks. If you have been streaming quarterbacks, Tannehill is the play this week. And it's probably low-hanging fruit, right? The Texans are bottom seven against the quarterback position in fantasy this year. And I've comped Ryan Tannehill all offseason. I called him Russell Wilson light, and we're seeing that play out. The reason why is because he gets a lot of rushing touchdowns. He's not going to be an electric rusher like a Lamar Jackson or a Jalen Hurts, but he can do enough with his legs to get it done, especially in the red zone. And that's no doubt in part to Derrick Henry now being out of the lineup the last two weeks and essentially for the rest of the regular season for Tennessee. And one thing we haven't seen since Derrick Henry has been out is a huge increase in pass attempts. But Ryan Tannehill is typically a guy who's, who's on the lower end, if not dead last in pass attempts. He is averaging 31.6 pass attempts per game on the season. And you've got to believe that without Derrick Henry, that's going to go up. Tennessee's trying to figure out how this running game is going to play out. Is it 
Dante Foreman? Is it Jeremy McNichols? Is it Adrian Peterson? And throughout all those running game struggles, Ryan Tannehill is still a guy that can carry an offense, an efficient throw of the football. We've seen Ryan Tannehill have these big pass attempt games already this season. In matchups, you probably wouldn't have thought, like 40 pass attempts against Seattle, 49 versus the Jets. So add in the fact that Ryan Tannehill is able to get it done with no-name players. And, and Alex, I have a crazy stat for you. Mike Vrabel shouted this out in his press conference. They've used 82 different players this season. The record <laughs> ever in the NFL for a full season is 84 different players. So they're two players away. The, the amount of injuries on here, I mean, they're going to break records for how deep they're going with their player personnel and the names they've had to call up from practice squads, even off the couch in the case of Adrian Peterson. But even with all that lack of talent on the roster, 17.6 fantasy points last week for Ryan Tannehill against New Orleans. I think that's his floor in a much easier matchup. I love it, Steph. And now it's time for my running back start of the week. And this is the moment we have all been waiting for. It's A.J. Dillon against the Minnesota Let's Vikings. Let's go. You do hate to see. You hate to see Aaron Jones go down with an injury. Fortunately, it looks like he will be back soon. One to two weeks is the prognosis on that. They still have a bye week as well, so wouldn't be surprised if he's held out until after the bye be healthy for the end of the regular season stretch and for the real NFL playoffs for the Packers. But in the meantime, we finally get to see what A.J. Dillon can do when he is just unleashed in this offense. He showed flashes in the past, even this past week. I mean, 21 carries and two targets. He had two touchdowns in that game as well. Like we've seen flashes from Dillon to this point in his career of just what he can be if he was a true workhorse back. You look at this Packers backfield, and I think Dillon could see more work this week against the Vikings than Aaron Jones normally was seeing because you got to think about it. Dylan was cutting in to Jones workload when they're both active. And now with Aaron Jones out, the only other running back the Packers really have is Patrick Taylor because Kylan Hill is already on the IR. So AJ Dylan is just going to be an absolute workhorse in this game against the Vikings. It's a good matchup as well. And I think Dylan's going to get 20 touches minimum in this game, Ooh. which gives him a, a massive massive floor that's just a safe safe play and the best part about it is that aj Dillon also gives you upside we know we've seen the quads we've seen how big they are we know he is just an absolute force on the goal line he is a huge threat to score a touchdown wouldn't be surprised to get another touchdown or two this week against minnesota and the thing that really elevates that ceiling even higher is the potential in the passing game we know Aaron Rodgers relies on Aaron Jones in that passing game almost as his wide receiver too. And you look at Jones at this season, almost five targets a game, similar numbers last year in terms of targets per game. No, I'm not saying A.J. Dillon's going to get five targets per game, but this offense is built around using the running back in the passing game, getting out in the flats, getting screen passes. And you look at A.J. Dillon this season, and honestly in his NFL career Efficient. last year, only two, tar only two targets, and he caught both of them as a rookie. And this year... Only 18 targets, but he's looked good on all those. And he's caught 16 of those for 12.3 yards per catch, which is tremendous from the running back spot. Not only that, I know it's a smaller sample size, but he passes the eye test as well. He looks very fluid in the passing game and is really able to get downfield and pick up those yards after the catch. So great spot for A.J. Dillon this week against Minnesota. It's a good matchup. He should get the work and that touchdown upside and potential receiving upside is what makes me absolutely love him as a smash start of the week in week 11. You know, I've been above consensus on AJ Dillon for a long time in Dynasty. I've done it's your guy. breakdowns of his college tape. I'm so excited to see what he can do with a full workload. I think we've already seen a peak of how fun it's going to be with him taking over a backfield. And I think him grinding it out between the tackles could really be the identity of this team if the passing game struggles without Aaron Jones. As this is a player, AJ Dillon is, that you can build an offensive round. I know that's a hot take for some people, but I do feel like he can carry a huge workload and carry the mantle from Aaron Jones, do big things with it. And if you listen to us, you know, three weeks ago, we said, go get AJ Dillon, go buy him now. He is a league winning trade target that can carry you down the stretch. Hopefully we see that play out in week 11 and beyond. But my running back start of the week is Michael Carter against the Miami Dolphins. And, you know, when you usually hear Michael Carter, you're like, oh, the running back for the Jets, not really that exciting. But we see time and time again, running backs on bad teams produce at a high level. Some of the top fantasy running backs are on terrible teams, whether it's Christian McCaffrey, DeAndre Swift, even James Robinson doing crazy things right now. And back-to-back -back years on one of the worst teams in the NFL in Jacksonville, 
And Michael Carter is a guy that can fit into that role because he is such a relied upon asset in the passing game and really the RB1 for the Jets right now. And since the bye week, they've really ramped up Michael Carter's usage in the passing game. He's averaging 7.8 targets per game over the last four. Now, obviously, there was that 14 target game in there. Again, Cincinnati with Mike White just went nuclear, peppering Ty Johnson and Michael Carter. But on the season, five targets per game. That's top 10 at the position in targets. He's also top 10 in receptions and receiving yards amongst running backs. So Michael Carter is getting it done through the air in PPR leagues. That is essential and exactly the type of guy that I want to plug into my RB2 spot. And you look at Joe Flacco starting this game for the Jets. He fits into the same profile as Mike White. He's going to check it down. He's not able to run around and make plays behind the line of scrimmage. So I'm expecting more of the same utilization for Michael Carter and maybe even more pass catching volume than Mike White. And at a 57% opportunity share on the season, that has been ramped up as the season's gone on. I'm firing up Carter. If I need an RB2 or even just a trustworthy flex option, that's not going to burn me in deeper leagues or leagues where my roster's hurt. I love the pick on Carter, Steph. And I do have to say, you know, a lot of these starts of the week are guys I'm going to be firing up on FanDuel. I mean, FanDuel is the best platform Let's in go. daily fantasy sports. And you listen to this and you might say, well, I, I get it. These are good starts, but I don't have them on my teams and I don't want to go make a trade for these guys just because they're a good start here in week 11. Well, fortunately with FanDuel, you can draft a new team every single week, get access to whatever players you want in these games all you have to do is put together a lineup for a given week or for a given a single game stay under the salary cap that FanDuel gives you and you just watch the money roll in for the the Sunday full slate contest which are my favorite you draft a quarterback two running backs three receivers a tight end a flex and a defense so fun. and you just put together your ultimate roster and these starts of the week are perfect examples of guys that we like that are probably a pretty good fair budget that you could slide into those lineups for a value and right now with the link in the description you will receive a 20 percent match on your deposit up to 500 dollars. that means if you deposit 25 bucks you're getting five dollars for free that five dollars gets you an entry into the sunday million where the winner takes home a six-figure cash prize Ooh. every single week so if you're on mobile continue on the web when you're signing up use that link in the description below and make sports even more exciting as we get towards these fantasy football playoffs but Steph with that being said I want to go ahead and get into some wide receivers because my receiver is a bigger name and it's someone who's been up and down this year it's Amari Cooper he's going against the Kansas City Chiefs in week 11 He's been very inconsistent this year, very up and down. The last two weeks have been disappointing for Cooper, but I think it's good to see the offense get on track. They had an amazing game against Atlanta, just absolutely blew him out. Didn't necessarily lead to fantasy football production for Cooper because unfortunately it was a CD Lamb game, and before you knew it, they were up by 40 points. Uh, but it is good to see them back on track after that disaster against the Denver Broncos. And the thing about Dallas this year is they're not really who we thought they were. We thought the defense was going to be tough again. We thought Dak would be throwing it 45, 50 times a game. He's only been over 50 pass attempts twice. One was an overtime game and one was in week one, 58 attempts against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's kind of what we thought from Dallas this season, but turns out that's been the outlier and the defense has been better than expected. Actually in three games this year, Dak Prescott's had 27 attempts or less so we look at the matchup this week against the Chiefs, 56 point over under in this game. I'm expecting the Cowboys to either trail or for this to be a back and forth game against the Chiefs and plenty of points to be put on the board. And in that week one game against Tampa where Dak threw it 58 times, Amari Cooper had 13 for 139 and two. Not saying that's going to happen here against Kansas City, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Amari Cooper hit double digit targets in this game. They're going to have to rely on him to keep up with Kansas City. So I just think this is a really good spot for Amari Cooper to get back on track in week 11 against a very beatable Kansas City defense. Amari Cooper's been looking a lot more like Tyler Lockett this year, the way he's putting up points, being so boom yeah. bust. But you're right, you have to go back to the well with Cooper. Can't overreact to a few bad games. We've seen this from guys that we talk about in our Discord channel all the time. If you have start sick questions, you just want to join the conversation with me and Alex, even join leagues with us, hit that Discord link. It's free down below. We're doing exclusive live streams in there as well, but that's the best place if you want to get a hold of me and Alex, ask us your questions. But we talk about names like Mike Williams, 
you know, Tyler Lockett and Amari Cooper, all mm-hmm. these guys are in the same vein. Adam Thielen is another one we could put on this list this season. These are guys you just have to continue to plug back into your lineups because of the ceilings that they have, not because of their floors. So I do love Cooper against Kansas City. I love Dalton Schultz against Kansas City. Fire up all of your Cowboys this week. But my wide receiver start of the week is a little bit deeper than yours. This guy's available on 25% of waiver wires right now. Cole Beasley against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are 30th against the wide receiver position this year. And a new development that we're seeing in Buffalo is that their right tackle, Spencer Brown, he's on the COVID list right now. We saw the struggles where the Bills had to essentially rearrange their entire offensive line to make up for losing Brown. And we saw Jacksonville Jaguars have a field day on their defensive line. Josh Allen running back 15 yards every time to try to let plays develop. And in that game, you saw Cole Beasley have 11 targets. And he's even had games with 13-plus targets multiple times this season. Last week, Beasley got hurt, which is probably why he ended up on some waiver wires. Only played 16% of snaps. He's gotten in limited practices this week. He should be fine. And the way that he scores, it's it's really from his receiving volume, not his efficiency, and that's completely okay. There's not going to be enough time for Allen to sit back there and let Diggs get downfield, let Emmanuel Sanders run his double moves and get open in the end zone. This is going to be much more of a check down game. I love Dawson Knox this week, along with Cole Beasley. And this is in the same vein as your Hunter Renfro start of the week last week. Great call there, Alex. Renfro went out and goes 7 for 46 and a touchdown. I think the same 18 fantasy point outing in PPR leagues is well within range for Cole Beasley here in week 11. Yeah, I love Beasley as a a PPR floor pick, and he has been another boomer bust guy, but in the right matchups, if you do read between the lines a little bit, you can figure out when when Beasley's going to have a better or a worse game. So this week, I like his chances against the Indianapolis Colts. Great pick on that one. But Steph, let's go to the tight end position. It's getting rough at tight end. Honestly, it's rough. We say it's rough every year, but I'll say this year that like middle tier is is better. You know, normally the middle tier is like touchdown or bust. And this year the players there just feel better. We have the Goddards and the Gasickis, and you have uh, Dan Arnold emerging into that tier as well. You have Hunter Henry. You have all this, this massive list of names. It's 10 to 15 names. Jared Cook. I could go on and on about guys that aren't quite touchdown or bust. They might be touchdown or bust plus, but at the same time, that makes it even tougher to pick a tight end to start every single week. You and I, looking at the two that we have here, they've been kind of hot and cold, so you do have to kind of close your eyes when you start these guys. Mine especially, Mike Gesicki against the New York Jets. Tough to trust after what we saw from Mikey G last week. Him and TJ Hawkinson both went out there and got their game day confused with cardio day, ran a bunch of routes, didn't get any catches out there. But the thing I love about Gusecki's <laughs> game, he still saw seven targets last week. You know, against Baltimore, that game was wild. I was actually there, and it just felt like an anomaly of a game. You know, Miami had the defensive touchdown. They were up for pretty much the entire game other than when it was 3 nothing early. And Gusecki still was able to see seven targets. And you look at what's going to happen in week 11. Will Fuller, Devontae Parker are still out. Tua is back. When Tua came in, that elevated that Dolphins offense much, much more than to what they were doing with Jacoby Brissett and a quarterback. So the Jets are 20th against the tight end position in fantasy football. The matchup is there for Gusecki. Tua Tagovailoa is supposed to be starting in this game. And Mike Gusecki, not only did he see the seven targets last week, but he has been fantastic this year. In PPR leagues, he's seeing a ton of targets. He's actually third in the NFL at the tight end position in targets in the 2021 season. You think of some of the names out there. You got Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson, Darren Waller, your George Kittles, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews. I just named a bunch of guys. Mike Kosicki is third in the NFL in targets this year. So he is getting the volume that you love to see. He's a talented guy. We saw the crazy one-handed catch a couple weeks ago. So I'm comfortable rolling Mike Gusecki right back out there against the Jets. I think he's going to have a really strong game in week 11. Back-to-back weeks that Gusecki's showed up in our start of the week. Last week it was me. Uh, we saw what happened there. You're right, the anomaly. The that process was, was there. Seven targets. Come the on, process was, was there, man. should have been there. Yep. The process was there. And to see zero for seven just <laughs> gut-wrenching. But we're going to continue to stick with the process. And I'm going to stick with the process with my tight end start of the week. It's Pat Fryermuth for go. the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
This guy was nicknamed Baby Gronk coming out of Penn State, where he balled out as a 19-year-old freshman in the Big Ten. He's 6'5", 251 pounds, great athlete, and it was one of those situations coming into the league, he was overshadowed by Kyle Pitts. If Kyle Pitts wasn't in his same draft class, if he didn't have Kyle Pitts to compete with going into college, coming out of high school, he would be far and away the number one tight end that everyone would be talking about, but you have a generational talent like Pitts that just happens to be the same age. But you and I love Fryermuth and Dynasty coming into the year. And now we're actually seeing for a rookie tight end, he might be doing Fantastic. historical things as well, man. I was giving you pushback on Kyle Pitts, especially before the Julio Jones trade, because I just thought rookie tight ends, the sample size that we have on them, it's pretty vast and they really don't do much their first year in the league. But then you look at Pat Fryermuth. Over the last four games, they've really ramped up the snaps. He's taken over that tight end one role over Eric Ebron as a rookie. Seven, seven, six, and nine targets over the last four weeks. And with limited usage, limited snaps, slowly getting ramped up as the season goes on, he's still top 10 in red zone targets amongst the tight end position on a team that's sixth in pass plays per game. And the Steelers are playing the Chargers, who are 28th against the tight end position. Chargers can put up points. You got to love the move as a tight end stream <laughs> this week. Dude, I love the pick, man. Friar Muth. Yeah, the targets are there. That's what you can't deny. And it's crazy, man. The rookie tight ends this year kind of rewriting the script there. Pat Friar Muth, great streamer. And there's a good chance he is still on your waiver wire. So a deep name there that should be a pretty good play against the Chargers on Sunday night. Well, Alex, I think that wraps up our starts of the week for week 11. If you guys like what we do here on the show, a like and a sub on YouTube, greatly appreciate it. Again, hit that Discord link, join the conversation, join that party with us. We're talking all football all the time in there all year round. Thank you all so much for listening and watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.